Hello everyone, my name is Preston Dennett. I've got a very exciting and unusual presentation for you today. I think it's something you probably haven't heard of before, and that's UFOs that hover over prisons. Now, UFO investigators have long known that UFOs are attracted to technological installations like nuclear power stations or Air Force bases. Uh, prisons, I think, fall under that category, so that may be what's drawing them here. Uh, I can tell you that these are not coincidental flybys. Prisons are being directly targeted. These are typically very low-level sightings. Often they're pretty long-lasting. They're viewed by both prison employees and inmates in some cases. Uh, there are cases involving physiological effects, cases involving electromagnetic effects. There are a number of photographic cases. People have taken photos of these. Uh, at least one landing, uh, humanoids have been seen, a, a possible abduction. So yeah, clearly something very profound is happening here. So let's just dive into these cases and see if we can figure out what's going on. First case I want to talk about took place on October 1st, 1997 at the Perry Correctional Institution at, at Pelzer, South Carolina. A correctional officer was in the rec yard. This is at night. He was getting ready to return the prisoners into the jail when a huge black silent object moved at a very low level overhead. It impressed him deeply. However, he did not report it to his, his superiors, which I think is really ironic because that's kind of his job to report anything unusual. Here he sees something that's extremely unusual. It's so unusual he's afraid to report it because he thought it might jeopardize his employment. It, well, he eventually did report it to New Fork, so that's good, the National UFO Reporting Center. Another case took place on April 8th, 1993. A group of three people, residents of the area, were driving along Highway 14 directly next to the prison in Newton, Iowa. They, there's this field right next to the prison, and looking into this field, they could see these bright red lights uh, that were rising up out of the field. They quickly j stopped the car and got out and looked at this thing, saw it for only a few seconds before it either disappeared or darted off. Uh, they did eventually report their sighting to the Mutual UFO Network, MUFON. Uh, lots of other cases. July 13th, 2001, a corrections officer at Chattagay Prison or Corrections Facility in New York was on his way to work to the prison and saw this bright glowing object hovering over the prison. It was making weird yo-yo movements going up and down repeatedly would stop hover dart at right angles he pulled over and actually watched this thing through binoculars for a number of minutes until it suddenly darted away at he said hyperdrive speed toward the north when he arrived at the prison he found that there was another guard at least one who had also seen the same thing Another case occurred in June 1987 at the correctional facility in Coldwater, Michigan. Uh, this case involves a number of witnesses. The main witness was a prison guard who worked at the facility. He was actually at home at the time. His home is only four blocks from the prison. And uh, he was outside late at night when he saw this huge triangular object move very low level over his house and directly toward the prison, the corrections facility. Uh, his wife actually works at the pro corrections facility, so he was very interested to see if she saw it and tell his own story. So finally she comes home and he tells her what he saw and uh, she's like, wow, yeah, the, there was, the whole prison was on buzz about it. It turns out other people had seen it there they sent out a prison alert response vehicle, and the people in that vehicle saw the same, apparently the same, triangle. So the next day, the guard goes to the prison, and he asks around, and everyone's strangely hushed, and no one will talk about it. 
Another case occurred on May 15, 2006 at the Prairie du Chien prison in Wisconsin. It's a very interesting case. Three people were driving by the prison when they saw these strange lights hovering over the prison smokestack. They pulled over and watched, watched this thing. It turned out it was not just lights. It was actually a triangular-shaped craft. And as near as they could tell, it was hovering over the prison smokestack. Uh, they watched it for about 10 minutes before it darted away. Uh, they're residents of this area and started asking other people and found out that a lot of other people had seen the same thing repeatedly. Uh, this triangular object hovering over the same area of the prison. So yeah, <laughs> clearly not a coincidence if it's happening multiple times. Here's another really interesting case which occurred in 2012 at a the prison in Henning, Tennessee. There were two witnesses, a housing unit supervisor and a perimeter patrol officer. And I just would like to read a direct quote from the prison patrol officer and let him tell you what he saw. So here's this quote. I was working a unit on the back side of the prison when a mobile unit called into central control and reported an aircraft hovering over the trees. The outside supervisor was not able to come at that time, so my shift supervisor called me to go out the back of my unit and report. This is a maximum security prison, so all aircraft reports are very serious to us. I stepped out of my unit 250 yards to my right was an aircraft hovering at treetop height. No lights, no sound. The top of the trees were not being disturbed. I reported to my shift OIC, officer in command, that there was an aircraft and it was making no sound, just hovering. It hovered maybe three minutes, then backed away from the institution, turning to its left, as it did. A report was written and turned into the shift OIC. It was boomerang shaped like the stealth fighter, had two white circles larger than what airplane engines look like where the engines would be. So yeah, another amazing case from a prison guard himself, the perimeter patrol officer, who thankfully at, at least uh, this was reported to superiors. So a lot of other cases. Here's another from a corrections officer at the Evans Correctional Facility located in Bennettsville, South Carolina. This occurred in uh, the 1990s. And again, I'd like to just give a direct quote. I was on duty that night and assigned to be outside monitoring the perimeter of the prison. At the time of the event, I was driving the security truck 10 miles an hour around the outermost fence of the entire prison. The prison fence is in the shape of a rectangle, but with rounded corners. As I came around one of the corners, there was a huge object, about three times the size of the moon, sitting on the tops of the palmetto trees at the back of the prison property. I stopped the truck and stared for a moment in disbelief. Then I raced to the hawk post, located at the back right corner of the prison. I jumped out of the truck and banged loudly on the door to be let in. I had tears streaming down my face and was hysterical. I was screaming for the officer in there to give me his binoculars. I got them and got back in the truck and sped around to where I had seen the object, but it was gone. I drove to the back of the prison and got out of the truck and just looked around up at the sky. After a little while, I noticed two tiny lights in the sky that zigzagged up into the sky and disappeared. After about a half hour, I received a call on the radio asking why I was not making my rounds around the perimeter of the prison by a lieutenant inside the prison. I told him he needed to come outside. He did, and I told him what I had seen, and he went out back with me to have another look, but I didn't see it again. I knew when I had first seen it that it could not have been from this world. The whole object glowed white and also looked as if it had tiny white lights all over it. So yeah, another really impressive report, and there's so many more. Uh, most of these do seem to come from the prison employees, 
This next case I'd like to talk about occurred on August 15, 1983 at the Bedford Hills Correctional Facility for Women in Bedford, New York. The witnesses were employees of the prison and they were on their way there driving up to the prison when they saw this huge, gigantic, black boomerang-shaped object over the prison. They estimate it was about two football fields wide uh, and covered with lights. They saw other people driving by who also saw this. What's really interesting about this case is the witnesses reporting a very strange feeling of static electricity and all their hair stood up on end. They also had the impression that the object knew it was being observed and was also looking at them, studying them. Uh, another case I'd like to talk about, November 3rd, 2018, at Umatilla Prison in, New, or in uh, Oregon. Uh, and this is from an inmate, and I'd like to just quote him directly. So here's the inmate talking. I was in prison, prisoning. I just happened to look up at the right time and noticed a moving light that, it was, that was at the right altitude to be a passenger or cargo jet, but it was moving too slow and it didn't have running lights like normal craft. It was just me and one other guy out in the rec yard and I suppose he was looking at it, at the craft as well. When the craft slowed or seemed to slow, it shone a white laser at one or both of us. My fellow inmate said, what was that light it shone at us? I replied, it stole our soul. But deep in my subconscious, I thought or felt I had received some sort of information and that it would be main, made known to me, to my conscious mind, by some trigger or in my time of need. I lost sight of it by looking away. I hope whatever it was will help positively benefit humanity. Another case I'd like to talk about took place on June 4th the year 2000. This is at Long Larton Prison in South Littleton, England. Uh, yeah, cases from outside the U.S. as well. Uh, this one took place in England to a security guard by the name of Jim Brace. He had exited the prison, his shift was over, and saw this classic flying saucer, a saucer-shaped, circling the prison. Uh, this was around midnight. Uh, there were other people looking at it. He immediately tried to call the police, but strangely, mysteriously, his cell phone malfunctioned. So he runs back into the prison and calls the police from the prison gatehouse. And the police said that they thought it was a blimp, uh, but later retracted this statement. Another case uh, took place on August 16, 1997 at Michigan State Penn. This is in Ionia, Michigan, and this comes from another inmate, and I'll quote him here. I don't know what made me do so, but I looked up and saw something in the clear blue sky. I mean, you get tired of looking at men all day long. I looked at it for about 10 seconds trying to figure out what it was that I was looking at. It just hovered there in one spot. Now, the inmate then turned to his friend and said, what is that? His friend replied, what is what? So he points to where he saw the object and it was gone. So he scans the sky and finally found it in a different location and points it out to his fellow inmate. And his friend says, man, I don't know what that is, says the inmate. We then looked down into each other's eyes and then looked back up at this thing and it was gone. Many other cases. Another one on April 8, 1993 at Lebanon Correctional Institute in Warren County, Ohio. Uh, some of these objects stay for quite a while, and this is definitely one of these cases. This glowing red object was hovering about 40 feet over the prison, and it was seen by multiple security personnel. It stayed there. It was changing shape. It stayed so long, they finally called the police who confirmed that they had received multiple calls about this object. One caller said it actually chased him down the road. 
but here it was staying over the prison for a period of three hours. Uh, the police called up Wright Patterson Air Force Base uh, in Wright Patterson, Ohio. They denied sending out any aircraft, said it was not appearing on their radar, th and that they knew nothing about it. They were later called again about this incident and denied receiving any calls whatsoever, uh, which is a lie because we know that the police did in fact call the prison. Uh, so there are another case that's very similar occurred on July 16, 2016. This is at South Boise Correctional Complex in Boise, Idaho. Uh, both staff and inmates saw this silver oval-shaped object which remained for one and a half hours over the prison. And it was seen by most of the staff and all the inmates who were able to see it uh, watch this thing for a very long time until it finally left. Uh, a really enormous case, um, very complex and very well known actually, took place on August 13. 1960. This is over the town of Red Bluff, actually over several, four or five counties in Northern California. Uh, the whole incident began around nine o'clock when there was a loud boom directly over the Tahama County Jail. Following this, for the next two, three hours, uh, this glowing red object was seen darting all over the place, over a fairly widespread area. Uh, dozens of police officers from different counties saw this thing. It was chased on radar. Some police officers uh, chased, I mean, it was caught on radar. Some police officers chased this thing for a number of hours, uh, two hours at least. Two officers got very close to it. Uh, this was patrolman Stanley Scott and Charles Carson, they approached to within about 300 feet of this object and saw that it was sending down beams of light. They described it very clearly. It was a metallic object. Uh, several, a couple of the officers uh, provided sketches of this thing. So yeah, this is a very long lasting sighting. <laughs> it's undeniable that something was there. At one point, this thing was hovering directly over the Red Bluff County Jail. And uh, seeing that it was right over the jail, some police officers called the jail, the, the jail guards, to confirm this incident. The guards were pretty busy with the prisoners, so what they did is they took all the prisoners, or those that they could, and marched them out onto the roof of the jail uh, so they all could see this thing. Guards and prisoners watched this thing. Uh, this was a major case. It was investigated by very prominent UFO investigators such as Walter Webb, James McDonald, and Dr. James Harder. And in fact, Dr. James Harder, some eight years later, would testify about this exact incident before Congress at the 1968 congressional hearings on UFOs. A uh, very impressive case took place on April 23rd, 2007, over the Millbrook Prison. The Millbrook Prison is located in Elmore County, Alabama. And the main witness to this case was a correctional officer by the name of Dave, David Middleton Edelin II. And uh, this occurred uh, right before he was doing the head count. He was actually doing the head count to return the prisoners uh, back into the prison. He was out there in the prison yard counting the prisoners when suddenly there was this huge blast of wind. Everyone there looks up and there's this triangular shaped, it looked almost like a cloud, uh, a triangular shaped cloud-like thing moving over the prison. People saw this from different vantage points. Some said that they could see that it actually had a metallic surface to it. Some said it looked almost translucent, but it was very low, about 500 feet overhead. Everyone who saw it said it clearly looked artificial and uh, it was totally silent. Uh, this thing basically buzzed the jail and 
moved off into the distance and was chased away when two military jets showed up. So David Middleton Edelin was called into the office of his superiors to report on what he had seen. Uh, he described his sighting and uh, they said that yes, many other people were talking about this thing and uh, they did not know what it was. It was the buzz of the prison for quite some time. Uh, David Middleton Edelin, Edelin later reported this case to Mufan. It clearly impressed him and in fact he would later become himself a paranormal investigator and wrote a book about ghosts and other paranormal events. Probably the granddaddy of this, these types of cases is what took place repeatedly, actually, over Colorado State Penitentiary in Cannon City, Colorado. And if you, don't, if you think these sightings are coincidences, you won't after hearing this case because this prison was targeted repeatedly, over and over again, at least four times over a period of years, decades really. The earliest case I could find at uh, this Colorado State Pen occurred on August 2nd, 1965. Uh, a tower guard and uh, two other guards, the tower guard main witness, his name was Donald Stites, and he and two other guards saw this pulsating, glowing object uh, very close by. It was hovering for about 30 minutes. Uh, another case took place about 12 years later. This is on September 1967. Uh, the main witnesses are a group of men who went camping actually some distance from the prison on the other side of the Crestone Mountains there to the west. And uh, they were out camping near Crestone when they saw three glowing objects very, very high in the sky. Suddenly they came swooping down and scared the daylights out of them as you know, they came swooping down and uh, sort of buzzed them, rose up and went to the east over the mountains to where this prison is, Cannon City Penitentiary, Colorado State Pen. Uh, the next day, they scanned the newspapers and found there was, in fact, an article about this. Uh, and there was a huge event over the prison there. Turns out these objects targeted the prison and were going all around it. Multiple police officers saw this. Uh, dozens, scores or more they were chasing this thing, which remained for two hours. Uh, when it wouldn't go away, they finally, you know, they called in reinforcements reinforcements, thinking this was a prison break. Uh, and they chased this thing for two hours. You know, they were pretty nervous about what was going on here to the point where they finally called the local Peterson Air Force Base, told them what was happening. Peterson Air Force Base agreed to send out two F-106 uh, interceptors to try to intercept this thing, which they did. One of the pilots got a visual contact on this and uh, had his instruments trained on it and asked his superiors for permission to fire. At this exact moment, the objects took off in an upward arc very quickly. S the two uh, F-106 interceptors tried to chase this thing, but it, no, it was going way too fast. They could not follow it, and it was gone. Uh, some 10 years later after that, a Another case occurred. This was on August, in August 1976. An officer was on tower duty and saw this 100-foot disc. It came very low, very close to about 600 feet away, he said. It made a low humming noise. It was moving at about 20 miles an hour, very leisurely, and uh, didn't stay that long and took off. Uh, but what's interesting about this case is he said it, it affected him physically. He became very disoriented in its presence and afterwards. In fact, for about a week or two weeks later, he felt strangely disoriented and had very disturbed sleeping habits. Uh, so yeah, these things are affecting people physically in some cases. Uh, the last case that I could find that occurred uh, at this Colorado State Pen 
uh, occurred on January 10th, 1998. Uh, in this case, both prison guard and inmates saw it. The prison guard was returning the prisoners to the metal shop to return the tools. Uh, and uh, when the, the guard and the inmate he was with looked up and saw this thing, this one was very high in the sky, uh, which is unusual for most of these cases, which are very low, but no, this one was pretty high up there, it looked. Uh, but it was chrome-like and gigantic. While it appeared very high, it was huge. And the officer estimates that this thing was probably about the size of 10 jet airliners put together. So yeah, like a huge mothership. He's never seen anything like it before. Uh, a number of cases, people have photographed these objects hovering over prisons. Uh, one case took place very recently, in fact, just a few months ago, this year on uh, February 20th, 2020. This one took place in the town of Preston <laughs> in uh, Lancashire, England. Lancashire, England. Uh, in this case, the witness was a lady by the name of Gail Jacques. It was around 1.30 a.m. when she saw this very bright, glowing white object, and it was moving over the housetops and went right over Preston Prison and hovered there. So she quickly grabbed her camera and snapped a photograph. It hovered for only a few minutes before this thing darted off at incredible speed, she said. Uh, she knew this wasn't anything normal. She didn't hear anything. So she posts this photograph online and asks people what they think it is. She got a lot of opinions, of course. Uh, some people thought it might be a star, but it's clearly not. This was below the level of the clouds. Others mentioned helicopter, but it couldn't have been that or a plane because it had hovered and was uh, silent. Uh, other possible explanations were Venus, perhaps, or the International Space Station. Couldn't have been Venus. It was the wrong time. Obviously, it wasn't the International Space Station if it's darting away at high speeds. Someone mentioned a drone, but drones aren't permitted to hover over prisons. So yeah, it's unidentified. Another interesting photograph, I don't know much about this case other than that it took place at Barrow County Jail in Georgia in 2012 when a bunch of people in this area saw this object. There was more than one witness uh, who saw this thing moving overhead. It was right over the Barrow County Jail when this one of the people managed to snap this photograph. So it's a pretty in interesting photograph. Uh, this is from MUFON. Uh, it was reported to the Mutual UFO Network, but uh, you'll have to make your own judgment on the authenticity of these photographs. Uh, but another, another case, one of my favorite, really, I found very interesting, very credible, uh, also involves photographs. And this took place on uh, September 1st, 2015, at around 3 p.m. This is in Northern California, over the very famous San Quentin prison. And uh, it's an amazing case, and I'd just like to quote directly from the witness himself who was driving by the prison uh, heading south. And uh, I'll just give you his direct quote. Not sure how to start other than to tell what I saw today. I was driving over the Richmond San Rafael Bridge from work towards Corte Madera, California today, and I saw this extremely bright, almost chrome-like sphere hovering over San Quentin Prison. It had a little bit of a blue hue to it and looked like it was rotating or pulsing. I couldn't pull over on the bridge and lost sight of it behind the hill. I was sure I'd catch it in the pass between the bridge and Larkspur Landing, so much so, I got out of my car at the shooting range there and was perplexed that it wasn't there. I got back in my car, hoping to see it again. I was looking all over when I saw it over by the village shopping center south of the 101. I lost sight of it at the hill next to the parking lot It was because it was heading toward Mount Tam. 
It was very low in the sky. I was looking frantically to my left and only glanced to my right to turn off the freeway and spotted it on the opposite side on my far right between me and the north hill of Corte Madera. I pulled over immediately and used my work iPad to quickly snap five pictures in rapid succession. After 15 to 20 seconds, it appeared to almost fade into itself and disappear. I sat there baffled. The pictures don't show how bright this thing truly was. It was like looking into the sun. So yeah, this was, was a case that was reported to MUFON. Uh, I think it's a very impressive case and fits this pattern of these objects hovering directly over the prison. This one is interesting because it was midday and a lot of people should have seen this. Uh, the only case I could find involving humanoids uh, that were directly viewed uh, was also reported to MUFON. Uh, case number 18809 and this one uh, again is from a is from a prison inmate and I would like to quote him directly because it's a very interesting story. So here's the prisoner talking. My name is Kevin and for over 10 years I have kept this to myself and have never told anyone till now. On December 6, 2006, I was at Foothills Correctional Facility and at the time I was serving a 24-year sentence for second-degree murder. I did not do the crime. A co-defendant did. And while at this facility, I was in a rehabilitation program for gang members. On this particular night, I was in my cell, and out of the corner of my eye, I saw a light coming towards the building. At first, I thought it was an airplane because there's an airport nearby, but something told me to look. A light was coming over the trees. I said to myself, that's too low for an airplane, unless it was about to crash. Then I said helicopter, and then I noticed there was no noise coming from it at all. It like floated over the treetops just high enough to clear the top of the prison I was in, which was a five-story building. I couldn't tell the shape of it because it was that bright. As it got closer, it appeared to have windows on the side, and as I looked hard to see if there was anyone inside, I saw four beings at the window of the craft looking out. I said to myself, no way. There's no way I just witnessed a UFO. I tried to shove it out of my mind, but I felt scared. And I am a type of person who does not get scared at anything. I have been out of prison for two years now and just got the guts to tell this. The reason why I've never told this to anyone is because I felt like I would have been deemed a crazy lunatic, so to speak. I do not know if anyone else has reported seeing anything at that date but I do know what I saw. I just wanted to tell my, so my story, and I hope it sheds some light, or at least have someone look into, see if there was any other reports around that time, just to put my mind at rest, to let me know I am not crazy. So yeah, pretty impressive report. Uh, final case, and this is the only case I could find involving an apparent abduction. This took place on August 9, 1968, at the Correctional Facility in Wales, Wisconsin. And again, I just want to quote the witness directly. So this is the witness talking. I was abducted from a juvenile prison, brought back a few hours later, and then charged with attempted escape because I wasn't in my room for the 3 a.m. count. In the ship, I was given a seven-dotted mark on my forearm and a shot of some kind in the base of my neck. The seven-dotted mark was with me for over ten years, the neck mark for only a week or so. So yeah, it's a brief case. I wish I had more information on it. It's the only case I could find where there were abductions, but I'm guessing there are more. Uh, so, I mean, it's hard to draw any really firm conclusions on this, but with 20, 21 cases, uh, I think we can see that there are some definite patterns, very low-level sightings, uh, sometimes long-lasting, 
uh, with some you know, physiological effects and so on. Uh, I did a study of these. You know, I first found about three or four cases uh, s some 10 years ago and wrote an article about these cases for Fate magazine. I've since located many more, uh, which I put together in my book, Not From Here, Volume 2. Uh, so yeah, I think I know the reason behind these cases. I th think, like, as I mentioned before, prisons are very secure locations. You know, they've got these barbed wire fences, these gigantic walls, uh, electric fences, uh, searchlights, towers. Uh, these are very much like military bases, and I think that primarily is what's drawing UFOs to them. But I'm not sure that's the whole story. Because let's face it, there are a lot of people in prison. There are, uh, let's see, it's some over 2 million people who are incarcerated in the United States alone. That's a lot. Uh, now, abduction cases are pretty widespread. In fact, a lot of investigators think they're fairly common. I'm one of them. And uh, the Roper Poll uh, survey organization did a survey on this to see how many abductees were, are in the population. And they found the markers of about 1 in 50 people. So if that's true, that would mean there are about 40,000 people in the, who are abductees in the prison population. That's a lot of abductees uh, who may be being abducted directly out of their uh, cell. And who could they tell and who would believe them? I think it probably happens a lot more than we think, but they're just not talking. So yeah, these are very strange cases, and I think it's important people know about them, and I th think it sheds a little bit of a window into who these visitors are to our planet and to the, their agenda. So that's it for now. Once again, thanks for watching, and keep having fun.